turn with me to Romans chapter 10. Verse 11, if you would, please stand in reverence for the reading of God's Word. Romans chapter 10, beginning with verse 11. For the Scripture says, Whoever believes on Him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon Him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things. Father, as we come before you today, Lord, as we enter into this, this Operation Christmas Child Celebration Day, Lord, as, Father, we, we look at sending out 250 boxes of the gospel. Or it, it's not about just boxes of gifts. It's about sending out 250 messages of the gospel. Lord, remembering that these 250 boxes that we're shipping out do not just represent 250 nameless, faceless children. These boxes represent, each one represents 250 souls. But Lord, it's so much more than that. Because each one of these children that is reached the gospel will be going into a home. So Lord, we have the possibility of reaching 250 families with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Not all of us can go, but all of us can be a part in sending. Lord, I thank you so much for the work that you're doing through this and other ministries. Lord, this is our purpose as a church. This is our goal to seek and to save that which is lost. Lord, please be with us during these moments we have. Father, may you be glorified by all that's said and done. And we ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Matthew 9, 14 says, that Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. We have a mandate to go out and to reach those children, to reach those that are lost. This video we just saw, that is a powerful video. And we're going to talk a little more about that in a few minutes. Menachi, this was one of the most brutal tribesmen that the Wadanis had. In the Wadani tribe, people did not live to see usually their children grow much less. Matter of fact, if his generation was the first generation to ever see a grandchild. I want you to let that sink in. His generation was the first generation of Wadani's to see their grandchildren. Nobody had ever seen a grandchild before. No child had ever seen a grandparent in the Wadani tribe until after the gospel came to the Wadani. It completely transformed that tribe and those people. Through the power of a simple gift, 
we can provide hope to the hopeless. Just like this tribe, these people, they lived a hopeless life. Medikai would tell you, it was kill or be killed. That's why they were a warring people. If they didn't kill the other people first, they would be killed. So they would attack without any provocation because they had to wipe out their enemies before their enemies wiped them out. That's a hopeless way to live. But through this ministry, through other ministries, our, our missionaries that go all over the world, we're bringing hope to the hopeless. We're bringing food to those who are spiritually starving. It's one thing to have a physical starvation, but if you've ever been starving spiritually, you understand the depth of that. When you feel like that there's just nothing inside. Well, see, that was this tribe. It was just a blackness in their faces and in their eyes because they did not have the gospel. That is all over our world today. That is right here in our own country today. There are so many people that don't have that hope. But again, as the church, we have the opportunity to bring hope to the hopeless. We have the opportunity to bring a, a spiritual nourishment to those who are spiritually starving, those are in our neighborhoods as well as those across the sea. We have the opportunity to bring living water for those living in a spiritual desert who just feel completely dried up. We have the opportunity through our churches to make a difference. I can't stress how important it is that as a church we do more than just come and sit together on a Sunday morning. God has called us to go out to minister, to make a difference in our community. And as I said in the prayer earlier, we can't all go. Not everybody's called to go into missions, but we can all support missions and those who do go. Not all of us are called to be missionaries overseas, but all of us are called to be missionaries here at home. We've all been called to minister to those around us. We have the opportunity to make a difference. We have the opportunity to love those who feel like they have been forgotten. Have you ever been one of those forgotten souls? You feel like, felt like nobody knew, nobody cared, nobody was worried. We have a lot of people in our world today, in our communities, that feel like they've been completely forgotten. We have an opportunity as Christians to take the love of God to those individuals, those who may not feel loved by their family, those who may not feel loved by society. We have the opportunity to share love. These videos we've been showing, when you see these children opening these boxes, understand it's not about a, a Christmas gift. Most of these kids have no clue what a Christmas gift is because they have no Christmas, because they don't know about Christ. But see, when they open these gifts, they know somebody, somewhere, cared enough to sit down and to pack this for me. I've seen story after story after story about the shoebox ministry and how God has ministered. There's one little girl that had been praying for shoes and just saying, I, I need shoes. She went to school that day, did not want to go to school because she, she had holes all in her shoes and her mom put some paper in there just to try to get her there. And she got there and they told her, I said, there, there's some people over there giving, giving these boxes of gifts. And she went over there and asked him, do you have a box for me? The man said yes, and he gave her the box. And she went and sat down and she opened it, and there was a pair of shoes in there. And they were her size. They weren't too big. They weren't a little too small. They were exactly her size. I don't believe in coincidences. That was by the hand of God's promise. That child got the box set aside for her. That's why we spend the time to pray over these boxes. Because I, I'm praying that each box goes into the hand of the child and the family that it is intended for. That's why these boxes need to be packed with love. We're not just trying to pile stuff in a box. We're sending the love of God out when we send these boxes out. So again, we have the opportunity to love those that feel like that the world and everyone around them has forgotten them. We have the opportunity to give provisions for those in need. Now, I don't know about you, but I like being able to get up in the morning and turn on some water. Yeah. There are some places they can't do this, man. That's one thing Samaritan's Purse does, <laughs> along with our other missionary groups. They take more than just a shoebox. They also provide clean water and other things. 
But these boxes, I like getting up turning on water and I like brushing my teeth in the morning. Sandra likes I do that too. <laughs> Imagine not even having a tube of toothpaste. Imagine seeing your child not the teeth rotting up because they can't they can't get toothpaste to brush their teeth. You know, something simple like a bar of soap and a bad cough. Seeing these kids hold these things up with excitement over things that we don't think anything about. See, we're so spoiled, we do not realize how blessed that we are. That all these things are just supposed to be there and we're supposed to have them. But guess what? There's a lot of people that don't have them. I shared with you a while back, we were helping a missionary, uh, a young boy that was over in Brazil. A friend of mine, uh, aunt and uncle, were missionaries in Brazil and their interpreter, they had, he didn't have any family much there and they kind of adopted him. And they began to help raise him. And he surrendered his life to Christ and then surrendered his life to the Christ in the ministry. And he wanted to come back to the United States and go to school, not to stay in the United States, but to take the gospel back to Brazil. So they helped send him, and he went to Liberty University and began to take courses with a good-sized campus, and he was having trouble getting from class to class because of the size of it. So our church chipped in, and we bought him a nice bicycle with a helmet and all the stuff. This boy sent back a thank you like we bought him a brand new Camaro. He was so excited, tears rolling down his face, said, I I've never had anything so nice. Now, be honest, parents, how many of your kids, if you sent them off to college with a 10 speed, would be writing, Mom, thank you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> you know, you're the worst parent that ever lived <laughs> if you did that according to our children, but this, this young man was so excited and so appreciative. That's the difference when you have nothing and someone reaches out a hand of hope and makes a difference. It makes a huge impact. Again, we have an opportunity to give provision to those in need. Freedom to those imprisoned by poverty and despair. It feels like there's no hope to ever get out of this. Yes, this shoebox is just it's just a little glimpse of light at the end of a long tunnel. But you know what? That little glimpse of light is the difference between total hopelessness and hope that there may be something better. Hope that we can keep moving forward. When we minister through random acts of kindness, we are displaying faith in action. Now, Scripture tells us that our faith should be shown through our works. Now, we're not, we're not saved by works, but they sure ought to show up in our lives. People ought to be able to see that we're doing something. We're putting faith in action when we do this, when we step out. Now, uh, when I said we were going to ship 250 shoe boxes, let's be honest, how many people thought I was crazy? Come on. I don't know. There was a few hands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are some others that aren't raising their hands up, but they know there ain't no way we're going to get 250 shoe boxes in. There's no way we're going to ship them. Guess what? We got, we've got extra everything. We've got extra money for shipping. We've got extra items. Look, I was starting to worry about toothpaste and stuff. And I, then somebody come in and said, hey, I've got 280 tubes of toothpaste. Wow, we, are, we only needed 250. We already got 100 something. Well, we need some toothbrushes. I had to call Lacey. Lacey said, hey, I can get toothpaste. Call Lacey. Oh, no, no, don't get the toothpaste. Okay, I got the toothbrushes. Come in. I got a box of 300 toothbrushes. Lacey, don't get the toothbrushes. We're good. Stuff just kept coming and kept coming. Faith in action. You know, so many times we, we set goals that we can reach. Well, if we can reach them, they're not God-sized goals. We set God-sized goals. Because God's able to do great things when we step out and say, this is a little big for us, but guess what? God can do it. And I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe God can do great things if we just step out of the way and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you to do this. Faith in action. Stepping up and saying, Lord, there's a need. We're going to do our part. Lord God, we're going to be the tool that you're going to work through. And God will work through us every time. Operation Christmas Child. Today we're going to be packing 
these shoe boxes. Give you a little idea where some of these things will be going. Europe and the Middle East. A mother in uh, Albania said, it was so good that you came to give out not only the gift boxes, but also the booklets about God. I'm happy that my daughter can hear and read about God. In uh, Belsaurus it says, a cuddly soft animal was a delightful surprise for this young girl. In Georgia, a gospel booklet was shared with one shoebox gift. In the Ukraine, families with limited income sometimes lack the resources to buy even the most basic school supplies for their children. The pens, pencils, and notebooks were greatly appreciated. We don't think about school supplies. Now, be honest. How many of your children this year, if Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, they went in there and they tore into their gift and the first gift was a notebook? And then the next gift was a pack of pencils. And then maybe some pens, you know, or a pair of socks or something like that. Not much excitement there. These kids are ecstatic over school supplies. Because imagine going to school and not having them. Imagine sitting in school and you have no pencil to write with, you have no pen, you have no paper. These children want to learn because they know that education is the only thing that's going to help them begin to try to move forward. They need an education. They need to be able to have that simple reading and writing and arithmetic that we take for granted. Well, through this, we're able to make, help make that difference. In Macedonia, in the picture at the top, in this slum settlement, children live among heaps of garbage in dilapidated shacks. Shoebox gifts brought rays of hope to the forlorn landscape as boys and girls heard the good news of Jesus for them. This couple I was talking about in Brazil that were missionaries there, where they ministered was called the garbage dump. It was an old garbage dump that children and families were living on top of. Now, it was basically just, it was a bunch of refuge. Not healthy, not sanitary. If you'll look in my office, you'll see one of the pictures or some stuff that I've got in there where they have sent stuff back to us. They were so grateful for the things that we did to try to help them. In Moldova, a little girl on the bottom says, candy is a rare treat in places like the rural village. When children open their boxes, the first items they often reach for are the lollipops. Now, if you don't think about it, I mean, our kids have stuff like it all the time, but to never have it, and to be able to open up a gift and see a lollipop. Also in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, a Sunday school teacher in Mexico says, when we started teaching the Bible lessons to children, several adults wanted to study God's Word also, and they completed the program along with their children. <coughs> How neat is that? Not only was it the children, but the adults come in and said, hey, I'd like to learn more about God too. And they came in and they went through the same discipleship program as their children, and they learned together. See, that's the wonderful thing. We're not, we're not talking about just a gift. We're not talking about just giving a Bible, but we're also following it up. We're discipling and seeing these children are disciples. In Panama, children received the greatest gift of all booklets, written in Spanish. In Ecuador, a U.S. teenager included her picture in the shoebox gift that was received by a girl in the Andean Highlands. In Uruguay, a pink notebook <coughs> and a junk rope were the perfect gifts for this little girl. Her friends shared in her excitement. The greatest gift of all booklets, this is the discipleship material. This is where they tell about the Lord Jesus Christ through these books. And every one of these children have the opportunity to learn about Christ and be discipled. The greatest gift of all booklets have been given out to children in 94 countries. Think about that. In 94 countries since the, since the inception of the project, these illustrated books tell the story of Jesus in 49 local languages. So these children will be able to receive this in their own language. We also, through this, we reach out into Africa and the Indian Ocean. A 13-year-old girl in Zimbabwe who received a shoebox said, I used to think, and I want, you to, I want you to listen to this, I used to think that God was very far away. 
Now I have come to believe in Jesus as my Savior and I have my own small Bible. Thank you. See, for so long, God was just a far off God that she couldn't connect with. But she found out through the Lord Jesus Christ she could have that personal relationship. And she received her first Bible and was so thankful for it. 1.3 million children. Operation Christmas Child Discipleship Program provides an overview of the Bible and upon completion of Bible lessons, each child receives a personalized certificate. More than 1.3 million children graduated from the Bible program last year. 1.3 million children were discipled about the Lord Jesus Christ last year. That is phenomenal. It's something that our churches can't claim. But guess what? Going outside the church, lives are being transformed and changed. Building upon the foundation of faith. Again, the greatest story of all is in over 52 languages now, including Spanish, uh, including these Spanish booklets handed out to children in Panama in the bottom picture. A lady says, my daughter Lori tells us that she has two birthdays now. Think about this. A mom says, my daughter Lori tells us that she has two birthdays now. The first when she was born and the second when she accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She recognizes two birthdays, as we all should. The video we saw earlier about Manike and the Wadanis. Some of you may have heard the story over the years. Nate Saint, Jim Elliott, two other missionaries landed on a sandbar to interact with the Wadanis. Their goal was to bring the gospel to them. They knew it was a deadly, deadly thing that they were trying because again, this was the most fierce tribe in the Amazon. As I told you, People didn't live to see their grandchildren. But they felt led of God to go. They landed on the sandbar. At first, it looked like everything was going great. Then, they turned on them. Menike, who was the chief that we saw earlier, man here, he is the one who killed that saint. He ran from a spear through him. Nate Saint's wife and Jim Elliott's wife, along with some other missionaries, did not give up. They went back to reach this tribe. Now, I'll never, never forget Steve Saint talking about his dad. His dad had a pistol with him. I mentioned it the other week. And he asked him, he said, if they attack you, Dad, will you, will you defend yourself? And he said, no, I will not. He said, I will use the gun to try to scare them away. But if I will die before I kill one of them, he said, because if I die, I'm going to heaven. If I kill one of them, they're going to hell. And see, it bothered Menike the whole time after this because he says he could not understand why they would not defend themselves. When Steve Saint showed up with his mom and they began to minister and try to share the gospel with them, Medica was scared to death of Steve's saint, his son. Because in their tribe's custom, the son would avenge the father's death. And he felt like this boy was there just to grow up enough to kill him. Well, today, he calls Steve saint his son and his, his children, his grandchildren. He basically adopted him into the tribe after he came to know Christ. Menike now has been all over the world sharing the gospel, telling about what God has done in his life. Now these men that landed on that beachhead, you would think, how crazy. They went into this and they were killed. What a waste. That's what Time Magazine said. Time Magazine said they went and they died. Basically nothing came out of it, but look what came out of it. God opened the door. Even through their death, something positive came forth. He talks about the, 
the uh, God's carvings. He he says that you see see God's carvings over all of uh, all over all of nature, and he talks about says now through the shoe boxes we have a tool to share the gospel with children in our remote villages and minister to their parents. He sees this as one of those ways to make a difference to those children around them. Gifts of joy. More than 90,000 shoebox gifts were delivered to the boys and girls in Ecuador, which is where this tribe is at this past year. The follow-up discipleship program is thriving with 4,200 children enrolled and over 3,000 committing their hearts to Jesus Christ. Over 3,000 were saved last year in, in this tribe and these tribes around Ecuador through this ministry. My point is, I want you to see this as so much more than packing a shoebox. You know, we are taking the gospel, as Jesus said, to the outer edges of the earth, to the farthest ends, the gospel is going out. Manike said, I give thanks to God for the blessing I have received in becoming his child. Shoe boxes were given to children in a mountain village, hospitals, and in squatters camps. In central Ecuador, the eruption of the, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word, Tungarara volcano left many families homeless. Samaritan's Purse helped rebuild houses and distributed hundreds of gifts to excited youngsters as, tang as a tangible reminder that God loves them. In the, in the bottom corner over here on the left, that's Steve Saint. says, Menike shares his testimony in Amsterdam in 2000. A global uh, evangelical leaders organization led by Billy Graham. He says, my ancestors lived a deadly life. Whenever foreigners came into our land, we would just spear them. How could we walk God's trail if we didn't see God's hand and if we'd have never seen God's servant, Steve's father? I did not know any better. We didn't know that this man was on God's trail. Again, he saw that there was something different in this man when he refused to defend himself. And through the work of these missionaries, he came to Christ. Again, the greatest journey is the discipleship program that they will all, all the children go through. This is the first one, God's greatest gift. Then they will go to the second one after finishing it, walking with God, showing how to walk in the steps of Jesus. And the last one, sharing God's gifts on service. So they teach about coming to Christ, then they teach about walking with Christ. Then they talk about how to fact and teach how we should be servants of Christ and live for Him. The purpose, scope, and process of what we're doing through these, these shoe boxes. The world's largest Christmas project of its kind, Operation Christmas Child, uses gift-filled shoe boxes to share God's love in a tangible way with needy children around the world. Since 1993, Samaritan's Purse has collected and delivered more than 113 million gift-filled shoeboxes to children in over 150 countries through Operation Christmas Child. In 2014, Samaritan's Purse hopes to collect enough shoebox gifts to reach another 10 million children. Our goal this year is to try to reach 10 million children and families. Shoebox gifts are collected in the United States, Australia, Austria, Canada, Finland, Germany, Ireland, Japan, New Zealand, Spain, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. More than 500,000 volunteers worldwide with more than 100,000 of those in the United States are involved in collecting, shipping, and distri distributing shoeboxes. Shoebox gifts are prepared for overseas shipments at nine major processing centers across the U.S., Atlanta, Baltimore, Boone, North Carolina, Charlotte, Dallas, Denver, Honolulu, Minneapolis, and Southern California. Samaritan's Purse will deliver the gifts to children in more than 100 countries on six continents this year. It's a lot of people going to be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? And then the discipleship 
More than 2.8 million children have participated in the greatest journey. 2.8 million. The 12 Lesson Discipleship Program created by Samaritan's Purse for Children who received Operation Christmas Child gift boxes. The Greatest Journey is one of the largest discipleship programs in the world implemented through a global church network to help children know and follow Jesus Christ. This is a massive ministry that, that reaches a massive amount of people. And again, it's not just children, but it's, it's families. We, you know, 2.8 million, you know, have been discipled, this, or hopefully be discipled this year. They're hoping to reach another 10 million people this year. Why did I set a goal with 250 shoe boxes? It, it wasn't a random number I pulled out of the sky. Samaritan's Purse says that your average size villages, 250 shoe boxes will supply one village. So we have the opportunity this year to reach an entire village with the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. Pretty neat, huh? But we couldn't do it without everybody's help. I appreciate everything that everybody's done. We've had stuff come in. We've had people praying. We've had people delivering stuff. And again, not one person, one, just one person could do this. It's through the efforts of an entire church. I want to encourage you to be here tonight for our packing party. I promise you, you're going to receive a blessing out of this as you go through. The thing I love to watch is the kids. I started seeing a maturity in some of our children over the years as they would go by. A friend of mine's daughter, she would go by and she would painstakingly make sure she picked up just, got found just the right items to put in each box because she saw it as more than just a box. She's sitting there thinking, I'm a little girl. What would I want? I, 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 want, to do, I, I want to minister to some other little girl. Again, we have an opportunity to make a big difference for the kingdom of God through this. But each and every day, you and I have the opportunity to make a big difference for the kingdom of God right here at home. Now, I've had some people ask me over the years, well, don't you think we just need to be doing this at home and not doing this overseas? Well, that's not, not what the scripture says. We have the opportunity every day to do this here. We should be doing it every day here. But this is a way that we can also make a difference elsewhere. We've got anger and we've got countries all around the world that we're worried about being attacked from. We want to change the world. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to change, change the world with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, as we come before you this day, Lord, I thank you so much for the privilege we have to serve you. I thank you for the privilege we have to give. I like what you know, uh, Jim Elliott made the statement many, many years ago, and, and I know I'm not going to get it exactly right, but talk about you know, what benefit is it for us to worry about keeping things that will not last, we can't take with us when we could use them for something that will be everlasting. Lord, the things we're doing right now will be everlasting. Lord, when we reach someone, you know, Nate Saint, Jim Elliott had no idea when they landed on that beach that 